So uh, here, uh, what was, I will start uh, showing that there's something like a, a new idea about that there are the function parameters uh, uh, tracing with our uh, VTF. Um, so there, uh, actually, that recently we uh, introduced that the function graph with the return values, so that the, uh, it can show that the, uh, the function graph with the return value, so that the, you can see that the which, uh, or say, uh, what uh, return value is uh, returned from the that, uh, uh, or say that are the functions. But actually, that uh, as you can see, that uh, this one is just uh, was expected that uh, the all the function return that the summer uh, was a integer value on the uh, register. <laughs> so uh, don't check that uh, the type. Uh, so that are, um, I yeah, as. Uh, but the same as the, the function uh, return value, we, maybe we can uh, trace that the, the kernel, uh, what's it, the function parameters uh, with the, uh, the function graph, because that, uh, uh, the function graph now are based on the F trace and the F, so F trace uh, past that the, uh, F trace regs, uh, which already uh, have what's it, that the, all the registers uh, storing that the, the function parameter. So that we can do that, and but the, how to get the the uh, how how many uh, parameters uh, we will get, and uh, how, what the, uh, each parameters has a uh, what kind of uh, types we need to know, so that our, uh, we can use that the VTF to get that uh, those information, like. Uh, So that's our uh, BTF, actually that's our function prototype information is something that is very similar to the uh, uh, f trace regs. But uh, anyway, uh, the BTF function uh, prototype information is uh, uh, in uh, the kernel already. And that uh, actually just showed, uh, uh, let's see, has our summer information about that the parameter, uh, num uh, the number of the parameters and uh, each parameter types, and also that the uh, function return types. Yeah, so that are, if we, we are can, uh, we will see that are the void, uh, then we can skip that are the showing that are uh, the return values. Yeah, or if we can uh, see that the data is a, a bool, uh, Boolean, uh, then we can uh, just show that the true or false or something like that. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, so, uh, so function graph tracer with BTF is uh, the idea. Um, actually, that uh, someone uh, uh, who worked on, uh, was they already uh, sent us uh, some kind of uh, prototype of the, the BTF, uh, 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 was it the function graph, but uh, that was it that are, uh, that can show uh, that all the parameters and uh, uh, checking that the function return values uh, very type. Uh, so that is uh, the new idea, but uh, there are some there are some discussions. Um, yeah, how many, uh, so, so for example, uh, how many parameter we need to, uh, what's it that are saved or uh, what kind of performance degradation can be your acceptable or something like that? And uh, uh, of course, that's the interface, uh, how uh, the user interface is. Yeah. yeah. Those are you maybe your list discussion items. Yeah. Do you have any uh, ideas or questions? Yeah. One second. Excited that I'm going to be, since I'm one of the speakers, I'm going to be getting myself a lapel so I don't have to walk around. But here we go. So I'm wondering is there any interest, for example, for pointer that has type, not just what pointer, for example, to get the data inside the structure? And if yes, then you. Five. Uh, yeah. You require to, to determine if the pointer is an input or an output to the function. So which is not we do that today. Sorry? We have that today. Oh, yeah. So, yes, uh, with the um, 
and the what's it called the F probe. If, yeah, F probe event actually that uh, uh, doing that the uh, some uh, already uh, supporting that the such, such kind of uh, precise function parameters. But uh, uh, this point, uh, I think that are, uh, we just need uh, for the function graph uh, tracers. We uh, maybe uh, need to start from the just uh, raw parameters, raw values right. of the parameters. So, um, and so that yeah. that is uh, was a uh, my uh, discussion item about okay, the so user yeah, interface. Uh, just like your interface. So basically, I mean, it doesn't have the BTF format. So, but if what you do is what I do is when I want to know like a value of a function parameter within the thing, and I've given talks on this and showed it at, at kernel recipes. Look at one of my kernel recipes talks where. You could say you could offset. Right now, this is a very simple one, but in his uh, up here, I don't think it's up on the args thing. You could actually put a parameter and say dereference this arg. So you can say arg one. If you know what it is, you could dereference it and then say a, a value. And actually, I showed someone from like a socket pointer from one of the networking tracks. And I followed like the socket pointer, found the device, found the name, and then actually printed the name of every single socket, following the parameters of a single uh, of a single parameter of a function. I was able to follow that and print that out. But it requires having the VM Linux with debug information, opening up GDB, and I go through and I there's a you could do like a size, like kind of like the offset of to find everything. There's a little trick, and then you can follow through. That's not what this talk is about. The talk is actually my goal, and I, like Masami's mentioned, function graph tracer. Actually, I want it for function tracer too. It's like give me function tracer, and it shows you every argument, every like all the functions, in every single call. It shows you the arguments, which when you don't want that extended stuff because that'd be a little bit more complex. But you could add that to the trace and see it for that one, two function that you care about. But a lot of times, like, I just want to see the, gra the, the parameters. And there's so many times that I want to see the parameters. Now, my question here is, how expensive is that? Now, one thing I thought of doing is when you say enable it, would <clears throat> is there a way of saying, I want a quick way of, here's a function. We have to look up the function type by IP address. I don't want to use KL sims. I want to say IP address. Here's how to retrieve the data. Could we, even if we have to generate when you enable this, it's got to go generate a table. I mean, if I could generate a table that just reads all the BTFs and maybe even says this, like we could break it down because there's only so many types of parameters. Maybe we're not going to put the name of the value, but just put value, comma, value, comma, value, comma, because then we, if we don't need the names, that means we could look at all the functions with the same type of parameter. So if you say this is an int, this is a long, this is you know a pointer, it could actually say, we just say the types and then put that into a hash table, create that so we know what to look at. And then when we get the function, we just go down the table and say, this is this map every single function to its type and just like maybe an enumerated thing. Look at this, go there, give me the data and throw it in the trace. And then at the end of the, during the trace, like when we do the output of the trace, we could then actually go look up the BTF because uh, the recording of the trace is time critical. That's the fast path. The reading of the trace, it means that we can just look, do a slow lookup and actually throw the names onto it if we want the names of it. Um, uh, just an Arnaldo? alternative to a lookup table would be probably to have a bytecode interpreter somewhere like that. Yeah, like that would work. That would work. Yeah, yeah. Like... You, you could say, uh, I want just the functions that uh, handle uh, escape buff. And then you would enable just that, those, those functions that has that escape buff as one of its parameters. I, I want to, tr yeah, I want to be able to say, hey, filter every function here that has this value. Oh, value or type. Let's say you want to follow, let's say, a connection, uh, yes. a, a TCP connection. So you, you, every uh, function that has as one of its arguments a pointer to a socket, let's say, you, you would enable it. Oh, you mean the saying, oh, oh enable... you're saying basically enable all the functions that have this type this type yes but okay that could, i mean we that's something has different. this type or returns this type and then you can follow a class so that oh that's interesting so yeah. so add that i want to say following filtering on type prototype yeah yeah Filter I, on actually, prototype. actually i did a tool like this a long time ago i can provide the output that it shows and then uh, yeah we can go from there so yeah um, that's a good idea yeah so that are such uh, so that uh, yeah I would like to get the more uh, what's a requirement or ideas to your yeah, to yeah I mean yeah, it's a way or... for you to that there are lots of functions in the kernel but you want yeah. just some subset of it <clears throat> and the, the criteria for for choosing it is class yeah so maybe, maybe well, we can uh, what's say that are, are make a filter online uh, from the uh, BTF, uh, BTF. Yes, so that yes, are yeah. yeah actually going back to your point or the guy who's 
what did he leave? Okay. Yeah. So um, we're going back to this point. Um, what we could do is if we filter on type, then we could say, okay, we know the type. That means that we want to know not just we don't want the value of thing with this type because if it has this type, we want to go and look into like into its structure and maybe follow the pointer and, then, and I, then say, give me that. Yeah, the, the, the tool that I did yeah. a long time ago, it got the a snapshot of the contents of yes. the, the data structure. And then you see uh, like a function graph tracer like. Right. And then you see where some of the fields change over time, mm -hmm. let's say. So you can follow, let's say, I, I use this for uh, following uh, network connections. So the the congestion control uh, parameters, where they were changing, like uh, when mm -hmm. was that the congestion window open, uh, reduced, yep. doublet. Uh, so you could go back in time to the place where, where it happened. So I think once we start um, adding uh, function parameters to the trace or not, I think this will extend a whole bunch of type of filterings that we could do. Mm -hmm. So if you start caring about digging into pointers based on type and everything, one thing you will want to consider is allowing that not only at function entry, but also at function exit. Because you have yes. some arguments that are pointer to stuff that are actually output arguments. Mm -hmm. And you yes. want to sample them. And at actually, function. part of the work that we're working on here with yes. Masami's work is to the ftrace regs is going to be passed to the exit as well. So you get the parameters passed to the exit. Yeah. And then if we have an address, then we can say, okay, on exit, read this address and print it. Yeah. That so yes, that's one of the things yeah, that we're actually, yeah. so add that to the list, so, so we remember it. Because I didn't think about actually reading the contents of it. Yeah, I have a similar experience on my user space function trace of tra yeah. UF trace project. Uh -huh. So it gives, a, it can give a, you an argument of function parameters. Yeah. And it's types. But it, it right now it doesn't follow the pointers, but you can give it this, whether it's an integer or a string or something. Mm. Then, or you can just simply follow the, the, the read the dwarf format in user space and figure out which how many data, how many arguments in what the data type is. Right. And mm. re record all of them. Well, we don't have we don't dwarf in the kernel. We have BTF. Uh, yeah. You yeah. have BTF right. the same. Yeah. And and uh, as Arnaldo mentioned, it, 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 it'd be nice if you have the types with the filter. Yeah. 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 Type, type. So the first thing I, I want to make sure that's going to be probably the most complex thing is this types and everything has to be done before the trace starts. So we need yeah, to make yeah, a yeah. table. Like we have to look. Oh, I mean, we could make it easier and just say do all, you know, allocate once and just have a table that just allocates everything. Every function has some sort of. Uh, information about what its types is and then a hook into the BTF thing. But uh, a lot of it is just going to have to be a really quick lookup. So I don't want to be searching every single function. I want to say right, once right, I find right. this IP address, I could do a binary search, which should do it rather quickly. But then right there, just tell me, here's enumeration. Just get this data, throw it in. Everything else is going to be post-processed, but we want to do filtering or uh, that. We're going to have to say, if it's on this function, we have to have a little flag or something that says, okay, you have to do something more. Yeah, so, so it's, right. In, you have trace, you have a... a the tree of the, the functions to look up by uh, address, mm -hmm. function address, and mm -hmm. it has a list of arguments of its type. Yeah. So that it can record the type yeah. for each mm -hmm. argument and yeah. look right. up. So that, uh, that is a, yeah, uh, kind of the, the function filter. Yeah. So that are, uh, but uh, we can use that are the pro function prototype uh, to make our filter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Awesome. So yeah, I'm like saying I, I may not want like just know our filter, but actually just maybe like, maybe like a trigger type thing. Say yeah. on this function, do something a little bit more, uh, more in depth, but have all other functions. Just here's just the parameters. So you could filter it, whatever on just normal filtering. You could filter it for parameter, uh, and just everything will be like that. And it also has a, a feature to to compare the difference to a single. Uh, Argument value, or or some global variable values, or even with the PNU uh, counters differences from the beginning of the function and end of the function. If it's, so wait, we are comparing what between the beginning and uh, if you, if you watch a global variable, if you need you want to where it changes. So right, actually, uh, okay, on tangent. 
Uh, there's this one person that started that object tracing, which yeah. I, I have yeah, an yeah. idea, but never finished. And it's something I will look at. So just on real quick tangent, there's this one idea out there. It was never really done the way I want it. So it hasn't made it upstream. It's called object tracing, which basically says, give me some value. You could either get it from a function parameter. So this is part of the thing with the BTF parameters is say, when this I get this parameter from this function, I want to follow this. So once this function's hit, give me that parameter. And then every function after that is going to give me an update of what the value of that uh, mm -hmm. that variable is. So if you pass in an address or something, it's going to then, if I say a value within that structure of the address, every function is going to give you that value yeah, at yeah, every yeah, single yeah. function. Once you hit that, boom. You, so, so as a tool, if you look at it, it's called like object tracing. So you could do like uh, every uh, every function entry, it will look at a value someplace. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of the feature that it reads the value of the, the specific uh, variable yep. at each entry and exit, mm -hmm. but it only emit the record only if it's changed. Right, no, actually, this is, actually it does that too. Yeah. It will read the value, but at every single function, but it actually only traces it on modification. So once it says, oh, something's changed here, it will print. And actually we have logic in there to save the last function. So actually it could print, it could actually print like, so say if uh, you had a, vari a variable, prints the variable value, and then goes scroll down, then notice that it changes here. Not only will it print the change, it'll actually print the function, the last function it was called, because we actually have a way of storing stuff like that. It will inject the function called where it didn't change. So because it's happening at every function, you want to know when was the actual last recording before the change. So once you hit the change, you want to know where the last recording was before it changed. Mm -hmm. And we actually could show that too easily. We have that fun yeah. functionality in there. Hip. Yeah. Well, 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 Lewis, behind you. Yeah, yeah. Then you can do it. Next, uh, slight tangent here, tangent, is that if you want to do this for global variables, BTF doesn't have any information on global variables, but us debugger guys would love it if we had another excuse to add that. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, you could do a global variables with k-probes. Uh, yeah. uh, every k-probe, you could actually, I mean, I don't know if we could do it for function tracing. We could do that, but maybe add it for the function tracing. But yeah, but for global, this object tracing, if you had a global variable, you could do it that exact same trace. Every single function call, it will print the global variable, or actually it will print it only on change. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Um, for for the the parameters, uh, one thing that I would love to see is to have an action such as trace on, trace off that we will have, uh, so that we could uh, start seeing the parameters for the functions after a certain point or uh, from now on, for example. Wait, Not you mean just time. show normal function and then see the function for the print? Or no? Uh, yes, uh, after a certain point or why? After a certain why wouldn't function. you want to see all the parameters? At? Um, too much information, maybe. Uh, I mean, just to, to, to keep the tracing clean uh, until uh, I really need that information. Well, well, that would be so, well, like, like you can write that down, but that's like probably we could do that, but that's like I would say it after we got everything else done. If it seems featureable, because like to me, I always like if I get the data, I get the data, maybe you worry about not losing data, but then you get to create a separate instance. Oh, oh, okay. So, so you mean uh, you would collect that anyway? Yeah, that's oh, what okay. I'm saying. I yeah, see, see your point. Yeah, because it's it's not it's really it's going to be very very low overhead, believe it or not. If we have this really quick table, I mean, actually, it might may or may not be. Uh, we'll, we'll have to do the actual. <laughs> we haven't written the code yet, so I can't actually tell you what the benchmarks are. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you have the table in yeah. mind. Sorry. Uh, what what would that table look like? I mean, compared to doing a byte code. Uh, so, okay, I would, um, well, we could do, no, the, the problem is this, uh, well, bytecode, you have 40, or actually now 50,000 different functions, and each of those functions, you're going to get what just, you mean, just say the table, so you have to have a table of when you hit that function, you have to know what to do with that function. Yes. So, that's the first table. Yep. Now, you are you saying maybe it created a bytecode thing yes. for each one of those things? Well, we have to generate a bytecode for each one of those things. I don't know how long that would take to create. They can be pretty small. Mm. Each can, of them. Again, and then would, can you say uh, with the bytecode itself, here's the question, I know it's time now, but the bytecode, then I guess we could generate a bytecode for each one and then see if they already exist. But then we, I would say we have a table to go, do a lookup for which bytecode. Yep. I mean, we yep. could do that. Um, which I'm like okay for, or just, yeah. I mean, to me, it's just going to be this function. I, I, the question is like, yeah, we could do bytecode, or, or we could create just... a, map, a shadow mapping of all your text and put the bytecodes at the right location where the instrumented functions are. So you have your table 
flat like this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that like that might be an optimization because yeah. that's more of a to me that's an optimization of the implementation. Right now the implementation might just be like, hey, just randomly read these values. You said you wanted this to be fast. So. No, no, I do. No, 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 I do. I do. I do. But I like this. This is like I'm not saying not do this. It's like basically it's a step towards that. Ideally that, but I don't know how hard, how hard that will be. If it's easy, I'll do that first. I don't. Yes. You will. Okay. But anyway, I think yep. we're it's a, up. yeah, time up. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh.